I say, what a year it's been. A few people I want to thank. CV1, who sponsored the plaque. Our guys here, H, uh, Paul, Rupert. <laughs> I'll get this right. <laughs> Rupert and Rankin Roger. Coming along and going to unveil it. Right <laughs> also, you've seen all this stuff here. I don't know how many. I've had a good look at it, but this is all done by the library. Thanks, Rachel Speak, Simon, and all the guys at the library, all the team that have done this. Thank you so much. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I'm not going to bore you with my memories of Tiffany's, the Lance, the Rock House, because I'm sure these guys have got better memories than me. They, they, they lived it. I only stood there watching it. But basically, you probably all know that all the two-tone bands played here. They all skanked around and give us a great night. I'm hoping that these guys have got memories. Can you all remember it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you that in a minute. I have a few thoughts about that. Because obviously, after I've finished, and this has been unveiled, there's going to be a Q&A session. So all start thinking, if you haven't already, what do you want to ask these guys? Nothing too intimate, <laughs> or their credit card details, <laughs> none of that, other than that, ask away, anything two-tone, I'm sure, hopefully, they'll remember it, because it's a few years ago now, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, some of you will remember this place, as Tiffany's, Locarno, the Rock House, stuff that went on here, Terry Hall made his debut with the specials here when they supported the Ultravox, Ultravox I should say, in 1978. Of course, uh, famous record, nothing to do with two tone. Switch that phone off! Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's alright. Of course, Chuck Berry recorded My Ding Ling famously in this building. I know that sounds amazing, doesn't it? You know? But all those country people singing, here we are. And here we are, as if by magic. <laughs> A picture of Chuck Berry of his. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you guys here now. Start with H. Yeah. Memories of playing in this place. It Anything was, stick out? Um, if you excuse the expression, <laughs> just well, it, it was a wonderful experience in um, playing at your hometown. Mm. You know, um, the audience was just went absolutely mad. Because it was a homecoming, wasn't it? It was when you yeah. first played it. It was the first, yeah, I think it, 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 all three bands on the two tour tour. That must have been a really kind of exciting moment because the thing yeah. that happens, and it's probably the same in Birmingham, everybody knows some old one. My uncle lives next door to one of the specials. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's the same. But that's the thing, the, the whole town mm -hmm. was coming out. It's the same when the, the enemy recently did their homecoming. Yeah. And again with the special, everybody talked about it and everybody wanted to be a part of it. And it, it seemed to light up the whole place. Yeah. And of course it was the same in 1979. Basically the same. It was like a, a family affair. Yeah. Bring it on. I think everyone had a wonderful time. Man. I sure did. Roger. I think what was most important to that, the two time times, was that all the bands kind of had the same kind of message, although they all sounded a bit different from each other. And that is the main thing that got through. Just, I, I think if it wasn't for bands like the Beach and the Special and the Selector and Madness, racism in this country would be so bad. It's bad enough as it is now, but it'd be ten times as worse. Yeah. I think our generation especially need to re-educate the younger generation because we're aware of it and we know, but they don't. Yeah. Paul. Well, uh, my earliest memories of um, this is a venue, the very first time I've, I've played here, predate Two Tone, and uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, the Locarno had this reputation in Coventry as a, as a smoothest place. And uh, one night, anyway, I was playing, there, there was a, a small side room. Um, and um, this was where private parties w were held. And anyway, this was uh, uh, just uh, on, the, on the cusp of, of punk and the band I was playing with, uh, Coventry Bank and a little bit more sort of glam rock in terms of dyeing our hair, wearing a pretty outrageous clothes. So there was a fire escape, so Johnny, the guitarist of me, 
So we were sort of kind of made up and uh, looking uh, maybe just a little bit scary. Went onto the dance floor, and I think Pete Waterman was playing DJing, and there were all these uh, kind of people doing this kind of uh, swinging around, and we were kind of freaking out. And then the bouncers uh, escorted us uh, sort of back from whence we came. Uh, not too politely, but uh, it was, that was a good laugh. Um, what was the name of the band? Shucks, I think we were called. Oh, <laughs> right. H -K -Z, so, uh, it's not one you're going to be featuring. Okay? No, 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 I've never heard of them, but uh, it, was, it was fun at the time. It was, it was fun at the time. <laughs> it was fun at the time. Um, I'm sorry, I thought... Well, me, I can't remember nothing of this place before you just say what's that here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I was here as well. It was yeah. a good night. It was a good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent night. Right, can I ask you guys to come up then? Thanks for that. Yes, and we do the official unveiling. By the way, the flag's not actually going to stay here. It's going downstairs, right yeah. of the lips. So, uh, about 13 foot off, but it's a bit difficult to get photographs there. Okay. Okay, I'll go out there. <laughs> how, many, how many men did it take to sort of pull it up? Are you ready? One, two, count, three. <laughs> Thank you. 